It is good to see you. They have given me the whole stage. I take it as a challenge to get out of the camera, as I always do. So we'll see. If you see me in the corner, it's really just because I'm messing with them, and I'll get right back in it. But uh, I, they, they struggle with keeping me in the middle, and now there is nothing to hold me there. So we'll see how this goes. It is so good to see you. It's been such a blessing to get to spend some time with you this weekend. It has been a blessing to get to hear uh, some fantastic speakers, and I've uh, really enjoyed uh, the opportunity to, to get to do that. I want to say a, a huge thank you uh, to Craig and to Zach and anyone else that, that puts in time to work. Uh, on these opportunities. I uh, had the opportunity to be here for the Mountain Lectureship and be here for Oath and, and Vacation Bible School. And, and I think it's important for us to, to realize. Uh, I was, I was, we were talking about the speakers uh, last night, and you think about it, and you think about Tyler and, and Kyle and, and Parker and, and Pam, and I haven't gotten to hear you speak, obviously, but I'm sure you're great. I hear you're fantastic. And, and, and Tiffany and Zach, all those speakers coming together here in eastern Kentucky. And, and it says a lot for the willingness of them to plan an event like this and an eldership to say, okay, it can work right here in this small town of Paintsville, Kentucky. And 22 congregations will come here and support that work. What an impact that has. There's a lot of people who go and they, they, they pay <laughs> hotel rooms and, and, and fees to go to hear speakers like that at so many places. And they get to come here and they get to enjoy God's word and fellowship with this congregation and leave blessed. And so I want to thank those guys for doing that. The eldership of this congregation is a, is a true blessing that continues to always, uh, you all have heard me reference the 40-day gospel meetings. This congregation, since I was a kid, has always done things that other people just didn't do. And it's always worked. And that's a lot of faith from a group of men who spent a lot of time working. And so I want to brag on them, brag on these guys who've worked so hard. And so I uh, hope you enjoyed your meals. Uh, it, meal, it must have been really good because <laughs> I was told by Chase that I better bring it because uh, everybody ate pretty good. I said, well, I'm the guy. They, they, they bring in these speakers, and they don't really want you to fall asleep on them and offend them. So they just bring me, who I've probably put up most of you to sleep already anyway. And so they bring you in. I think that's why I get this session. I love this session. I love getting to do this session. Uh, we, uh, Miranda and Addison ate a peanut butter sandwich on the way. I, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to them. Um, they do things like eat peanut butter sandwiches in the back of the car and do without me a whole lot uh, because I don't say no very often because I love getting to do this and, and they love getting to be here with you. And so they were back there hammering down on peanut butter sandwiches. I had, everybody remembers that two years ago, I always get this session. I love this session. I really do. Uh, two years ago, I had a candy bar <laughs> on the way here. I stopped in Betsy Lane. We didn't have time to stop in Betsy Lane because I had, you know, some additional travelers and they weren't ready to go when we were ready. But we, uh, I had some great salad. I stopped by the house and it's the only salad I eat is fruit and uh, cream cheese. And so it was, uh, it was really good. And so I appreciate them and appreciate they're, they're the best. And, and Miranda is awesome, puts up with me as we're getting ready to get ready for school. And we've had about 15 speaking engagements this summer. And she doesn't quarrel at me because I'm not home ever. But I appreciate that. So we're going to talk. We're going to try to wrap this up. Try to, try to finish up our conversation. My, my title that I was given is Now What? After Healing Has Begun. So, so maybe over the weekend as we've talked about brokenness, Maybe, maybe you have, have started to work through some things. Maybe, maybe there's been some things that you've decided that you, you need to, to bring yourself back out of some brokenness. Maybe it's been, a, it's been a time that you've been trying to work out a brokenness. Maybe you found yourself in a broken place and this was what brought you back here. Or maybe you're sitting here this afternoon and you still feel broken. And so what we want to work through is, is what does God's Word, what can we learn, what can we know about brokenness and healing that comes with that? I think the most important thing I can say is it doesn't happen quickly. And, and, and I, Craig gave me some points to follow. I think I followed a couple of them, and I, I, this is one of them. It doesn't happen quickly. Brokenness is not something that's going to happen overnight. If you, if, you, if you feel broken, if you feel lost, if you feel in a, in a position where you're just hurting real bad, or maybe you've made some mistakes and it's put you in this really low place. It's not just going to fix overnight. Those of you who, who are from this congregation know that I spent five years as a middle school assistant principal. 
It's one of the few times in my life that I've ever seen brokenness fixed within minutes because we would have a relationship that would, would spur up. Sorry, middle schoolers, if I offend you, it's just what I've experienced. We, we'd have a relationship. It would start, you know, mid-morning, maybe in the cafeteria before school started. You know, they'd have a big day. By 10 o'clock, they were holding hands at class change. You know, by 11, they were sitting a little too close, and we were having to spread them out. And I think that's why they have those little round seats now, so you can't do that anymore. We used to have the benches, you know. And so then the afternoon, by one, they broke up, and they were screaming, crying. It was just the worst thing that ever happened to them. And we were having to put them back together because they actually weren't there to, to meet a spouse. They were just there to learn. And then by 3 o'clock, they were holding hands with the next person that they were now dating because they had healed, you know. I don't know if you've ever seen that. That's what I experienced in my five years working with middle schoolers. That's, that's healing that's not realistic. <laughs> that's not true healing. And so when we talk about healing, we have to understand that this is not a quick process. It's not something that happens quick. Yesterday, the teens, I'm not going to tell the same story, I promise, except for just a little bit. The teens got to hear about my steps. Uh, yesterday, my topic was about Gorilla Glue. It was very fitting. These steps have about eight layers of Gorilla Glue on them because we were talking about bonds that were better than that, and I wish I had a bond better than that. I love Gorilla Glue. It's awesome. I just wish something was better so I wouldn't have to keep fixing that step. And they heard me tell my story that the way this step works is we've been in the house for four years. It's probably been broken eight times. It's just the way it's laid. And, and so the most recent event was a couple days ago. Miranda's behind me. I'm walking down into the sunroom. I step on that step. That piece goes flying, crashes. Miranda, <laughs> Miranda says, she said it. She may not admit it. She said, you stepped on it too hard. I said, well, look at me. I don't ever step softly, you know. <laughs> So I stepped on it too hard. So I did. I stepped on it too hard. It went flying. The uh, reporter of bad news comes running. Our four-year-old Addison comes running and says, what was that noise? And she talks to us about the step. And my dog will now no longer use the step until he watches me fix it. And so I fixed it last night. And, and so now you can see that other picture. There's only two steps there. It's the top one. You can still see a little bit of the white glue coming out of it. That's because my craftsmanship is not great. But we started to repair it. But here's how I would compare those steps. I laid down on them, you know, put all my weight on them to try to let that glue dry because it's supposed to be super glue. You would think it would be super and be fast. And then I raised my weight up after about five minutes and the step raises up with me. And I thought... <laughs> This is not going to bond. Addison was standing over top of me. Miranda can, Miranda can verify this. She was standing over top of me. She knew I was a little frustrated, so she was throwing me toys to make me feel better, saying, Daddy, is it not going to work? Is it not going to work? What are you going to do? You're going to have to do something else. It's not going to work. And so that was my help that I had. And so while I'm laying there defeated, fixing this step, I flip it over, and it says, allow 24 hours for full bonding. And so I, I did. And this morning, it was better. Why? It didn't bond immediately. I had to give it 24 hours. And so about 12 hours into it, it was starting to get better. I'm hoping by tomorrow or tonight, about 10 o'clock, it won't still be raised up like it is a little bit. I don't think that's going to happen. But I, I think I can step on it now for about eight weeks before it breaks again. That's healing. That's what healing looks like. That's what healing from brokenness looks like. It doesn't just immediately fix. It doesn't just immediately repair, but it takes time. And there's a lot of factors to that. It's an active and slow process, and I think we need to remember that. I think it's important for us to realize that brokenness comes from a lot of different places. I, I sat down as I was looking at this lesson and tried to look at all the titles, and I think one of the things that they did a really good job with was we didn't just focus on brokenness from sin. Because that's not the only way we sometimes find ourselves broken. That's not the only way we find ourselves that down and, and hurt and in pain. But there are many causes of brokenness. So I'm going to break this up in a couple parts. I want to start with, with some things that are non-sin brokenness. Talk about that a little bit, and then I want to talk about sin brokenness, and then I want to talk about using brokenness, and that's how we'll finish whenever. I just want to remind you all, y'all ate for 10 extra minutes, so don't blame me if we're a little late. Brokenness from major life events. We, we know that sometimes there are events that take place in our life that just make us feel a little bit broken. We know there, there are things that, that feel heavy to us and, and they beat us down and they bring us worry and sometimes they even beat on our faith some. They even make us question. You know, we talk about doubt a lot and, and, and we know that there were great people in Scripture who found themselves with some doubt. Even amongst Jesus, 
they found themselves with some doubt. And so we think about things like major illness. Think about losing our job. We think about a relationship that's broken, not a middle school and an older one. We, we think about things like that. That as those things happen, they bring us this great worry and this great need to build our faith. Otherwise, they can create us some separation. And so, so what's the point? The point is, why is it not a quick repair when I feel broken and beat down? It's not a quick repair because there are things I have to address. Even when I say, today I'm going to move forward. Today is the day that I'm going to move forward. Today is the day that I'm going to push myself forward through the struggles of this hurt. There's still going to be days that I have to address worry that it's going to happen again. That I have to address worry of the results of what's happened to me. I'm going to have to do continuous strengthening of my faith. If it's an illness issue, I'm going to have to change my lifestyle. I may have to, have to change the way that I, that I do things in my, in, in my eating or in my exercise or, or whatever that may be. And then sometimes, in the process of healing, there's a minor or a major setback. And what happens? Then it all pushes back over again. And so I have to address that. I have to, to work through that. And so brokenness doesn't heal immediately because of factors like this. And then I, I think of, of brokenness from loss. I put this one in its own category because I, I, don't, I don't know that it's easy to individually understand the impact of loss. Loss has a different impact on everybody. I, 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 I talked to Josh Allen a while back, and, and he said this actually in a sermon uh, just, just a few weeks ago. He said, you know, the one thing that, that gets you when you're talking to people is you'll be talking about the loss that you've suffered. And they come back to you and they say, yeah, I know what you're saying. And he said, you know, they don't. Now, it's a, it's a common phrase that we use. But we have to understand that everyone's loss looks different. And so when, when, when people are are, are suffering from loss. When people are, are, are trying to work through loss, we have to understand that they deal with consistent reminders. I talked to a lady the other day. They were trying to plan a vacation. They would vacationed in the same place for years. They haven't been back since the loss of their child. And so they, they, had to, they, they, they were trying. <laughs> they were trying, and she was talking to me a little bit about how we're going we're gonna to give it a try. And she teared up even thinking about going. You know, I think sometimes when, when we see people dealing with loss, we don't realize. I, I've been working with these folks who, who've been close to this lately. I, I didn't realize some of the hurt that comes to people until I've talked to them. Rebuilding life with major change and dealing with ongoing grief. Those are things that keep brokenness from healing quickly. And so what do we do with that? What do we do with that? What does Scripture tell us to do with that? Because I don't know. I don't know on my own how to help someone sometimes. But Scripture says that God has a role in it. Scripture says that God will always have a role on it. I, I think this is one of the greatest verses in Scripture. Because you've heard me say it here before, I'm sure. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Think about that. How many people are walking around out in the world saying, hey, please give me all your problems. Please come and sit down with me and tell me every problem that you have, I will listen. That doesn't happen very often, does it? Doesn't happen. Most of the time when someone shares their problems, you hope that they're just listening, they're having trouble paying attention, and usually the conversation gets really quiet really fast. Because either they don't know what to say or they're just not really paying attention. But God doesn't say, listen, if you want to give me your problems, I'll listen to it. That's not what he says. He asks us for them. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do not be anxious about anything, Philippians chapter 4. Uh, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What do I know? If we want to talk about healing, if we want to talk about healing, how healing works, the one thing I know is I have to be in conversation with God if I'm going to heal. And the beautiful thing about it is He will listen. God will listen. Pull out your phone. Not right now. Don't pull out your phone right now. 
But pull out your phone sometimes and see how many reds you got on it. When you go to your, or your call log, how many reds you got where you didn't answer? <laughs> Think about how many missed calls other people have from you that maybe they didn't answer. God says, I'll always listen. I'm always present. And he asks us to bring our burdens to him. I can't tell you. I can't tell you the full path to, to healing from your brokenness because it's an individual thing that you have to work through. But I can tell you a key role is God's role. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Isaiah 41, 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold, my right, I hope, uphold you with my righteous hand. Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is near to those who are, have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Scripture is so very clear that if I am going to heal, I have to do it through God. And it is so very clear that not only do I have to do it through God, but God wants me to do it through Him. It's pretty awesome that we have a God who wants us to cast our cares on Him. Then secondly, the church has a huge role in this. I think Scripture makes it very clear that the church has a huge role in helping us come out of our toughest times. Philippians chapter 2 Beginning in verse 1 says, Therefore, there's, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort, if any fellowship of the Spirit, or comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but for the interests of others. See, church, we have a role in helping others come back from brokenness. We have a, a role in helping others heal. But you know why we can be good at that? We can be good at that because we too at times have had to heal. See, I think it's important for congregations of God's people to remember something. We're all imperfect people. I told Eddie I was thinking about talking about him, I will. I wasn't going to do it yet, but I'm going to. Eddie was telling us a story on Thursday night about his truck. It's broken. Um, he, he's over it, though. It's not a big deal. It's not fixed yet. And uh, he, he actually had Mark Reed calling the guy to try to get it fixed. Um, but his truck's broken. You go talk to Eddie about a broken truck right now, he's going to understand what you're talking about because he's a little frustrated by his being broken. He'll tell you about it. Ask him or don't. He'll still tell you about it. I didn't ask about it. He still told me. Here's what we know. Why can we understand each other? Because at some point we have all been in a low place in our life. We have to have the humility to remember that. We'll talk about that in a minute. And we have to have the willingness to give an ear. But I don't think giving the ear is the hard part. I don't think, I don't think giving the ear is the hard part. People will listen. I think the mouth's the hard part. I think sometimes we bury our hurt. We bury our brokenness within us. And we don't allow ourselves to have the trust in our brothers and sisters to say, I know you care about me, and I just need you to help me through. I think that's one of the greatest delays in healing brokenness, is we keep it in. But God says... Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. If God tells me to do that and God tells you to do that, how are we going to do that if we don't know that other people need us? We have to be a body of people who is humble enough to say, I'm broken and I need your help. And we have to be a body of people that is selfless enough to say, God said, if they need my help, I have to put my interest in them. And I should want to. We talked about it yesterday because God loves them. And I should love them. We understand each other because nobody in this room is perfect. And nobody in this room has ever not had a form of hurt. It may not be the same as yours. I know people that have had a level of, of hurt and loss that I don't understand. 
So I think we've got to be careful with our words. We can't just pretend like we know what they're talking about, but we sure can listen. And one day, that healing will continue. And you'll be able to move forward. Probably before Eddie's driving his truck. <laughs> Romans 12, 15, rejoice. <laughs> Sorry, Eddie. I was actually saving that to the end, but I, I couldn't help it. <laughs> rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. John 15, 12, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Well, if, if the commandment is to love one another as God has loved us, and he said here, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And I'm supposed to love people the way God loves me. It sounds like I should be saying to my brothers and sisters, come to me. I can't give you the rest that God could give you, but I sure can give you an ear. And I sure can give you a hug. And I sure can give you a smile. If you don't want a hug, I'll just give you a handshake. But I can love you. And here's what God promises. When I work through suffering and difficulty, this is what he says in Romans 8, 18. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall, which shall be revealed in us. The greatest challenge I give all of us is when we feel like we're at a low point, when, I, when we feel like we're beaten down, when we feel like we're getting broken, we don't let it wreck our faith. Because it's not worth it compared to what waits for us. So then we got to figure out how to fix it. Now let's talk about sin. Brokenness from sin. And I'll quit here in a little bit. Brokenness from sin. Because sin is, is a great breaker. Sin is a great separator between us and God. And you know, when, when, when we have an issue with sin, it's just like what we just talked about. When we're going to come from our broken place, when we're going to find ourselves back home, it's still an active and slow process. We can come home. We can make the decision to get ourselves right. But even after that, getting ourselves right, either choosing to become a child of God, there's a baptistry back behind here, or coming back to the congregation, or coming back to God, coming to the congregation saying, pray for me, I've made mistakes, I need to find my way home. But that doesn't erase all the rest of the problems. See, brokenness doesn't end with that. Because, you see, usually, when I've been living a life of sin, I've broken some relationships. So I've got to prepare those. You can't just say, ah, all those people I lied to, you know, that's all right. They're not important. I'll just pick up with the new people I meet. No, I, I think those are the people we have a chance to impact when we find our way home. We've got to rebuild trust with the people who we've hurt. We've got to reshape our life. See, the natural reaction when we've been living in sin, when we've been living a broken life, the natural reaction is to just live that life of sin. So I'm only going to be here for a few hours on Sunday, and then I'm going to go Monday, and my life's not, it's going to be back to the old life. You don't come out of here, and then the church hire you, and everybody just come to work here on Monday. We've got to go back to our real world. And so we got to reshape our life because the natural reaction for us all this time has been to go towards sin. And so i got to establish godly priorities. That's not always a fast process. Depending on the life I've lived. But what I know is that I can do it. I had a guy tell me one time I worked with him, I, I love him. I love him. I've gotten to know him really well. And he said, he said to me, he was telling me about a, a really major mistake that he'd made. He's a member of the church. And... Um, he, he, made a, he made a really poor decision quite a few years back now. And he said, I wake up every morning and I hate myself for it. And I said, well, you've got to stop that. And he said, what do you mean? I said, you've got to stop that. You can't wake up every morning and hate yourself because of what you used to do. And he said, well, I don't want to do it again. I said, well, I'm not telling you to forget it. Remember it and then forget it. So these are contradictory points. I'm going to tell you why I put them the way I did. I do think we need to remember sin. We do need to remember the things that we've done in our life that have brought us to brokenness. Matthew 26, 41 says, Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You see, what are we going to watch and pray for? Well, the things that have gotten us in the past are things that Satan are going to throw at us again. So I have to remember how I messed this up last time. Have to remember what it was. Uh, Zach, I got to listen to a portion of Zach's lesson this morning. Uh, and, and, and he talked uh, about desires. Now, desires ultimately become sin. 
My desires aren't going to change when I've decided to get myself right, when I've decided to bring healing. And so I've got to work through those desires. And I've got to make sure that Satan can't tempt me with those. And when he does, I understand how to not let him pull me from God again. And see, 1 Peter 5a, what does it say? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It doesn't say until you become a Christian, then he's going to stop. No, actually, I think if God would have added any words to that verse at all, he would have said, he's going to work harder on you when you decide to start serving me. Scripture's very clear on that. And so what do I need to do? I need to remember what got me in that place. I need to remember what led me to brokenness. Was it addiction? Was it, was it marital issues? What was, it, was it alcohol? What was it that led me to brokenness? I need to remember that so I don't make that mistake again. But I don't need to wake up in the morning and hate myself for it. Because God wants me to learn from it. But God also says this in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What's that mean? He forgot about it. He forgot about it. You ever, you ever washed your car? I, I, don't, I, I like to drive it through. It just seems like a, a more uh, a convenient process. So you never drive it through? And there was that one bug that got squashed on, squashed on your windshield. And you get it through to the other end and that bug's still there. See, to me, I should get a refund. Because that's not clean. That's not cleansed. That's shiny with a bug spot. But see, God doesn't say in Scripture, if you come to me, I'll make you shiny with a bug spot. He says, I will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So he says, forget it. Remember it enough not to mess it up again, but forget it enough to not let it ruin your life because God's forgotten it. He's ready to move forward with you, and he does not want that to be something that is the center of your focus. 1 Peter 2, 24, He who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Died to sin, it's gone. If God can forget it, I can forget it. And you know what? Just as a side note, if God can forget people's sins, you and I can forget their sins too. Sometimes we're imperfect and like to remember other people's sins. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We know this scripture very well. It says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside weight, every weight, and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Remove the weight. I don't know about you, but if I lost about 100 pounds, I'd be faster. I think I had to be. I think I'd have to be. I know I could run longer. And so when Scripture says, get the weight off of you, lay aside every weight, take everything off of you, remove that, and just run the race for God. It's a significant thing when it comes to healing the brokenness that comes from sin. Because people out there may not forget what I did. I can try to fix it. They may still try to remind me. They may even still try to pull me back into it. The Scripture says if I'll get that weight off of me, I can truly be great for God. 2 Timothy 4, 7, and 8 says this. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. If I'll do Romans 12, 1 and 2, and I'll just live for God and do what he asks and allow myself to be great for him, I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not going to be perfect. I'm going to strive to be perfect. That way I work my way back up. Then what happens? I can say, I fought the good fight and I finished the race. I don't know how many races I'd finish right now. I'd have to get in better shape. God says, you want to get in better shape, lay aside all that weight, and then finish that race. So what do we know? What do we do here? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to four minutes, and I'll, I'll promise you I'll try to quit. Let's give brokenness purpose. See, it's not easy. It's not easy. Healing from brokenness is not easy. We know that. But brokenness has a, has a purpose. It can have a purpose for us. It doesn't have to be in vain. Because when we've been broken... We're going to interact with others 
who've been broken. We're going to interact with others who have had the same problems as me. And you know, it's really interesting in this life because we all deal with different temptations and we all deal with different struggles and we all deal with different loss and we all deal with different worldly issues. That Sometimes we're not an expert on everything, but we can be real helpful to people who are struggling with the same things we struggle with. We can be the person who goes to the end when they're broken and when they're lost and when they feel like they have no hope. And we can say, I've been there. There's a lot of broken people out there that I could go to them and say, ah, just like Josh said, I know what you're saying. They could say, no, you don't. No, you don't. But there's a lot of people who have found their way to healing who could say, I know what you're saying. They could say, I know you do. We need to make sure that we don't hide our past, that, that we don't just erase it to the point that we can't help other people. Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. And Philippians 2, 4 says, Let each of you look, in, not, look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. You heard that a minute ago too, didn't you? Because Scripture says that I need to go help other people. I need to be open with people. I need to be willing to talk to people about the hurt that I've dealt with so that I can help them through it. And then I can give it purpose. I can give brokenness purpose. And then I need to give God the glory. I need to give God the glory of how I found my way out. See, because when I get confused and think I found my way out of brokenness on my own, I'm in a mess. Because I didn't. I've not found myself to full healing if I haven't done it with God. Because he has the only perfect plan to get out of it. Psalm 86, 12. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. And I will glorify your name forevermore. Psalm 115, 1. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory. Because of your mercy, because of your truth. We need to always give God the honor and the glory. We need to always live in a way that we open the door to give God the honor and the glory then we need to always realize that each of us have experienced something different. Each of us has experienced a different level of brokenness. And each of us are at different stages of healing from that. You may be at the early stages of healing. You may have just become a Christian. You may have just really started the process of healing from hurt. You may be there. You may have, you may have experienced brokenness 20 years ago and, have, and continuing to work through it, but you've, you've seen progress. Or you may be broken right now. You may be sitting there saying, I have great need. And here's what I can tell you. My kid's the first one got up and walked out. Here's, here's what I can tell you. There is no place that will help you heal your brokenness like the church. And I would argue that you can't truly heal without the church because God is the great physician and He is the one who can truly bear your burdens. So I ask you, as we close out uh, what I think has been a, a wonderful weekend, are you broken? Are you, are you broken this morning? And I don't mean that in a bad way. Do you, are, you, are you in despair? Are you hurting? Are you, are you, do you have a need that maybe the people here in this congregation don't know about? Are you in a place that the church can help you heal? It's not going to be immediate. There's going to be things that we're not even going to understand about your brokenness, but we can help you with that. You may be really broken. You may just have a little wound that you're needing to work through. But whatever it is, let's begin the repair together. Don't try to heal on your own. Don't try to work through brokenness on your own. You can't do it. But God gave us us. God gave us the church. And I promise you, at some point, We've all been like Eddie's truck. We've all been broken in some way. And all we want to do 
is go to heaven with you. All we want to do is show you the love that you need to find your way down that path of healing, however long that takes. And that's our goal, no matter where you are today.